Hello and welcome to the 13th Oxford Real Father Conference. I'm one of the co-founders. We seed the conference in 2010 as the antidote to the Oxford Farming Conference, which basically represented the establishment view of farming, which told us that the way the government and the corporates were organising farming was all jolly good and on course. And of course it wasn't, it was absolutely disastrous. There's a split in mindset between people who think that the real purpose in life is to create convivial societies and to look after the natural world, the biosphere, and people who think that the real purpose of the world is to, to get as rich as possible and to become as powerful as possible. And that's reflected in agriculture between the people like us who embrace the idea of real farming, which is based on the ideas of agroecology, treating all farms as ecosystems, and of food sovereignty, everyone having control of their own food supply. And the other point of view, which says that farming is just a business like any other, must be designed above all to maximize wealth and must be based on commodities. So we're providing the alternative to that. I'm absolutely excited about going to Oxfordville Farming Conference this year. There isn't a more critical time to be doing this for us all to be coming together to plot, strategize, share learning and really think about how we can get agroecology at the heart of policy. We all know we need that. This year is critical, climate and nature emergencies, critical for farmers, critical for eaters, everybody. We need to be getting it right this year so that the agricultural transition can come. I'm particularly excited about um, the sessions that we're running on peri-urban agriculture, on supply chains, making sure policies are there to make supply chain support agroecological transition for farmers um, and for eaters. And obviously we'll be talking about environmental land management policy. And so really excited to talk to everybody about that, farmers, um, practitioners, um, policymakers, and the non-governmental organizations will be there to share learning. And obviously critical time for us all to be um, together plotting, as I say, how to put agroecology at the heart of decision-making. This year, I'm really excited to see so many sessions on agroforestry, uh, which is a, a subject particularly close to my heart. It has, of course, been covered in previous uh, conferences, but this year we've got, I think, more sessions than there have ever been. Uh, and we've got a real opportunity to explore the depth and complexity of the subject. The other crucial role that the conference plays is in supporting new entrants helping them to learn, of course, uh, and the, the practical farm sessions that the Soil Association is laying on will certainly help to do that. But the conference also builds community and, and makes connections that will see new entrants through their entire careers. Land in Our Names and Shared Assets are programming the Justice Strand of Oxford Real Farming Conference, and we're both partners this year for the first time. It's really exciting. The Justice Strand is really important because the organic and agroecological movement within Britain needs to have an intersectional approach where we're thinking about who are the people who are marginalized from accessing um, farming as a livelihood or accessing the produce of um, agroecological or organic farming. And it tends to be people of color, um, queer people or working class people and this is very different from a lot of places outside of Europe or Britain where the, the agroecological movement is being led by peasants and we need to think about how if we actually want people to transition to organic or agroecological farming we need to like center the people who are marginalized from that since we were all together two years ago in Oxford, I've been really excited by the energy and the dynamism that's been coming from our sector. The stuff that's been happening on farms, but also particularly for the PFLA, equally true of what's happening in butcher shops and retailers, and also perhaps most excitingly, what's happening in the academic community, the people who are trying to research what our systems are doing. On the other hand, 
I've also been really confused about what's happening at the policy level. The sorts of pressures we're being put under both at national level and also international level. And I don't really know where this is all going. I feel at ORFC, we're very much in the first camp. We're about the positivity. We're about what's happening next. So really looking forward to seeing you all over the next few days. I've seen some amazing sessions being planned and I think you're gonna be really excited about what's coming. The ORFC really marks the beginning of the year for me and I think for the rest of the land movement. It's a time to come together, to listen to each other, to learn, but most importantly to build those connections that really feed us throughout the year. I think that everyone will understand that the food system is facing some of the biggest challenges that we've ever faced but also some of the big opportunities and it really does feel like a time of change and I think that the connections between different people are really being built and the movement really does feel like it's maturing and growing in a very exciting way. Neuris is coming onto the conference as a partner and we're really looking forward to sharing our messages that we developed in the run-up to and at COP26, um, and to, to engage everyone in the conversations around farming as a solution to climate change, because it's really important that we carry this work forward. COP26 didn't involve food systems and, and farming and the voices of farmers as much as we'd hoped, but there is a trend now, and we're expecting food to be much more prominent at COP27. However, how we talk about food and who talks really matters, and what we're worried about is that it will become a top-down approach that focuses not on the food system as a whole, but on agricultural innovation in a narrow sense. And so what we need to do at this conference is really come together in the sessions concerning climate change and think about how we can make sure that agroecology is being put forward as a real solution to the climate emergency at COP27 and in future climate negotiation spaces. I believe that life is all about learning and the conference provides a great learning opportunity. It's a great opportunity to share ideas a great opportunity to build connections. We may not sit together physically, but although we're going to meet virtually, it's still a great time to get to know ourselves, to build connections, to build solidarity, and exchange those tips that just make a big difference. Uh, farmers United, as the saying goes, can never be defeated. Now that may sound like really cliche, but we really need to get farmers together. Because sometimes we believe that because we're farming, from farming and doing things in different parts of the world that they are different. But coming together really shows the unity of purpose. It shows what it means to implement simple ideas of working with nature. This to me is what everybody can look forward to because it helps all of us to build up a store of ideas and then to refine and to reshape and to move the world in the direction we need to go. Hello everyone and welcome to the conference. I think I speak on behalf of the whole team in saying how sad we are not to see you in Oxford, but we're still really excited about the program which has 135 sessions for you to choose from. And most of these have been organized by you, the food and farming community of this country who keep the ORFC alive and buzzing each year. So thank you. We also have almost 30 global sessions, which is fantastic, with farmers, food activists, and uh, food producers from all around the world. So those are really worth checking out. And that's one of the advantages of being online, of course. Many of you have already logged into the virtual conference platform, Hoover, to have a look around the program, and maybe even put together your own personal schedule for the two and a half days. If you haven't done so, I really recommend you do that. We've got 14 sessions starting at any one time, so it's really good to have a think about what you want to see before you arrive at the conference. There will be tech support through the conference, so please don't suffer in silence. If you have any difficulty accessing the sessions or logging in, just get in touch. There's an address at the bottom of the screen. I promise that no question is too stupid. I have asked them all. We'll also be sending out an email every morning before the conference with program advice and any news updates, so watch out for that. And for those of you on social media, you might want to have a look at Farmerama's Instagram uh, lives, which will be going out every morning as well. So that's all my practical advice. It's now just over to you to enjoy the conference, the 13th annual Oxford Real Farming Conference. 